Namaste, dear students, and let me welcome you to our English class. So, my dear students, can you guess what are we going to learn today? Of course, it's right. See, we are going to learn using a dictionary. So, are you familiar with the term dictionary? So, do you know what is dictionary? Please guess me, tell me. So, what did you say? Okay, that's good. You said that a collection of a collection of words. Have you seen a dictionary? Okay, then let me show you. See, can you see? <clears throat> what is this? Look at here. So, can you see it? So, read it, please. What is written there? Yes, there is written Oxford Dictionary and Thesaurus. So, have you ever seen this type of book? Do you have this type of book? Good. So I just like to show you some other pictures, okay, of the dictionary. So you can look at the slide, please, there. So you can see the picture. What is written there? Please read that one. Yes, there is written concise Oxford English Dictionary. Can you read it? Good. So one more you can see there. So what do you see there, my dear students? Yes. There is a dictionary again. And what is the next one? Well done. You know that dictionary does not mean only printed one. You know that 21st century is the century of science and technology. So you people, you know that because of technology, we should not depend on uh, printed books only. OK? So you can find out that we have a lot of gadgets like tablets, mobile, laptop, computer, you know. And if we have internet connection, then we can find the collection of words in different applications, programs, you know. So you can see just example there. <clears throat> the next picture you can see, there is written Oxford Dictionary again, see. So nowadays we can use, we can go through them one. So if you have a mobile and if you want to need difficult words, you know, if you don't know the meanings of difficult words, and if you want to source them, you can easily check out, and then you can find. There are some online dictionaries, there are some offline dictionaries, you know, so it is very easy for us. Again, I just like to show you another picture. See, that is the picture of, uh, let's say, laptop, and again, we can find the meanings of difficult words along with other things, you know. Then, my dear students, I just like to show you the first picture again. See, so I have already asked you, what do you see in the picture? You have already said that, good, you have seen a dictionary, fine. Now, next picture again, now can you tell me, what is written there, what's the question? You can read, how do they help you? So, have you ever used the dictionary while you are learning your English, and if you don't understand difficult words, while you are going through, uh, let's say, passes, you know? So if we don't understand the meanings of the words, do you feel it easy to understand the paragraph or what is written there? So it's very difficult. So do you think that dictionary is an essential thing for us or not? Yes, you are right. Dictionary is an essential tool for us. So whenever we find difficulties in understanding the words in the passage, paragraph, textbook, you know, at that time, we can search the meanings of difficult words and we can understand the given text. Is it clear? All right, my students, now you can read this question, see. Do you have any of them? Do you have a dictionary in your house? That can be printed dictionary or that can be e-dictionary, you know. Do you have? Good. If you don't have, then you must have a dictionary in your house. Is it okay? Otherwise, it's very difficult for us to understand the meanings of difficult words. So in Nepali language also, there is a dictionary and we have to buy that one. We need to have that one because although we speak Nepali language, we don't know the meanings of all the Nepali words, you know. So we have difficulties. And if we want to know the meanings of difficult Nepali words also, then we can search in Nepali dictionary. Is it clear? That's why we are non-native speakers of English, you know. So we are learning as the second language. That's why we must possess a dictionary in our house. So it is very useful for us. Do you understand it or not? Okay, fine. Then, <clears throat> for example, you can see, if you look at the dictionary, first of all, you shouldn't forget that there are alphabets. We have alphabets from A to Z. Is it clear? 
So you can say capital A to Z or A to Z. My dear students, first of all, I just like to ask you a question. Okay? The question is that if I write here A P P L A apple, or there is A N T ant. For example, you don't know the meaning of the word apple, or you don't know the meaning of the word ant. And if you want to search the meaning, which word do you find first in the dictionary? Do you find first apple or ant? Can you tell me? Which one do you find first? Yes, you will find ant first, and then only apple. But can you tell me the reason? Why you firstly find uh, ant and then only apple? Well, my dear students, you can see here is also A, here is also A, alphabet A. You know that A to Z, there are 26 alphabets in English. So we have to follow alphabetical order in the dictionaries. You may think how the words are arranged in the dictionary. So the words are arranged according to the alphabetical order. Okay. So you can see there is A, there is A, and there is N, there is P. Now, my dear students, you can tell me which alphabet or which letter comes first, uh, N or P? Yes, you are right. So, first N comes, then only P comes. That's why we find this uh, word and first in the dictionary, and then only we will find apple, because P comes after N. Do you know it or not? So, one more example I just like to give you, okay? <clears throat> so, let me write down two words here. For example, Choose, C H O O S E choose, C H O I C E choice. Now, can you tell me which word do we find first in the dictionary according to the alphabetical order? Yes, you said that which one first? Choose or choice? Yes, again you are right. You said that choice. Why? Because see, there is also C, there is also C, there is H, there is H, there is O, there is O. And here is O, here is I. So which comes first? I comes first or O comes first? Yes, according to our alphabetical order, I comes first. That's why we can find choice first in the dictionary and then only we can find choose. Is it clear, my students? This is how the words are arranged in the dictionary. Don't forget it, please. Now, I just like to show you another slide which you can see what sort of things we can find in the dictionary first in the slide, and later on I'll show you other materials, okay? So you can see, please. <clears throat> see, there is written, can you read it now? Uh, the second word you can read because the first one is a little bit darker. B A L L I S T I C, ballistic. See, ballistic is written there. So can you pronounce this word? So the spelling is. B A L L I S T I C. So, what is its pronunciation? How do you speak out this word? Do you know? Do you have any idea? Have you ever heard this word? See, dictionary is very useful to us. Dictionary helps us in this way. There is given the spellings, see, B A L L I S T I C. You don't know how to speak it out or you don't know how to pronounce it. So, the pronunciation is also given here. Technically, we call it phonemic transcription. So, what do we say it? Uh, the pronunciation, the way of pronunciation is technically called as, yes, you are right, that is phonemic transcription. Please tell me this uh, term again. You are right, that is phonemic transcription. So repeat it once again, please. Yes, you are right, phonemic transcription. All right, my students, then you can see there is the phonemic transcription and you can find grammatical class of the word or you can easily understand parts of his speech. In your junior classes, you learnt about parts of his speech, no? So what can be the parts of his speech? Can you tell me? Yes, they are noun, verb, adjective, adverb, blah, 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 you know? Yes, you are good, my students. Now you can see, ballistic, the phonemic transcription is there. Now you can see, the word falls in which category, in which grammatical class? Is that noun, or verb, or adverb, or adjective? Yes, you can read. See, there is written A D J E C T I V E adjective. So another important thing we can find from the dictionary is grammatical class of the word. So don't forget, my students. I have told you that we can find the meaning of difficult words. The first thing. Another thing is that we can find the way of pronouncing the way. You know, 
means phonemic transcription, second thing. Another third thing, you can find the grammatical class of the word. So this word falls under adjective, OK? So you can find meanings. <clears throat> Generally, my students, you know that English words have multiple meanings, many meanings. So we have to find out the meanings according to the context. We have to find out the meanings according to the situations, OK? So you can find, see, ballistic means you can find uh, projectiles, a uh, ballistic missile, one that is power and guided but falls by gravity, OK? Another easy word I just like to tell you here. See, what is written here? B-A-L-L-O-O-N. So how do you pronounce it? You may feel that, you may say that balloon. Is that right? Generally, you can find we non-native speakers, especially in Nepal, we pronounce this word as balloon. Is this right or wrong? See, how it is pronounced. Uh, I will tell you, I will give you these uh, examples, sounds, you know, consonant and vowel sounds later on. So it is pronounced as balloon. See, balloon. So how do you pronounce? Balloon. Okay. Once again, pronounce it, please. Balloon. All right. Now tell me, whether it's noun or verb or adjective or adverb, what do you guess? Yes, it's very clearly written. There is written noun. Okay. So balloon falls under noun. You know, noun means naming word. Now you can find the meaning. See, what is its <coughs> meaning? A small inflatable rubber, especially one with basket below for passengers. Sorry, uh, a small inflatable rubber, toy or decoration. First meaning you can find. Second meaning you can find large inflatable flying bag, especially one with basket below for passengers. And again, you can find another meaning. See, outline containing words or thirds in striped cartoon, strip cartoons you can see there. And then you can find it. If you want to see Bob, cause do, cause to do something swell out like balloon or balloonist noun again you can find these types of variations of the words also so i just like to show you another example here my students see again here is also later on i just like to show you how british people pronounce the words how northern american people pronounce the words you know i just like to inform you so again you can see here this word for example what is written there b-a-r b-a-r-i-c barbaric you know, so how do we pronounce it? It is given here. Ba, uh, ba barbaric, you know, ba barbaric, okay? And again, it falls under adjective. And it mean, the meanings are given here, uncultured, you know, uncultured given there, cruel given there, primitive given there, and the variations of these words are again given there. So how many things can we get so far from the dictionary? See, the first thing is that, Obviously, definitely we find the meanings of the difficult words. That's good. Then second thing, what do we find in the dictionary? Then the way of pronunciation. That is what we technically call, please tell me. Yes, that is phonemic transcriptions. And again, we can find the grammatical class of the word. So you people have seen that adjective, noun, you know, adverb. So I have shown you, uh, let's say, adjective and noun also. And at the same time, what do we find other? The words meanings are given in the situations also all right now i just like to show you <coughs> from your unit see <coughs> it's given in your textbook so unit six what is this guru g u r u guru is this english word or sanskrit word do you know why english is very rich in the world because Oxford Dictionary borrows so many words from different languages throughout the world, you know. That's why our Sanskrit word is also taken by English people. And it is already enlisted in the dictionary. Okay? So, Guru, so can you tell me how do British people pronounce it? So, this is the way of pronunciation. So, uh, you can find it is Guru. And this means that in Nepal you call uh, Raso, Dirga, you know. So if we want to show it, Dirga. If we pronounce it a bit longer one, we indicate this type of thing. But if we pronounce shortly, then we don't use this one. So how do you pronounce? Guru. Guru. Okay. So Northern American people pronounce also in the same way. Guru. So practice it, please. How do British people pronounce it? Yes, you are right. Guru. And how do Northern American people pronounce it? Guru. You are right. And you can tell me, guru falls under which grammatical class? Parts of his speech. 
See, look here. What is written there? Noun. Okay. It is fallen under noun. And can you tell me the meaning? Can you read the meanings of the word guru? See, a Hindu or Sikh religious teacher or leader. Okay. Another meaning we have informal. A person who is an expert on a particular subject or who is very good at doing something. So, it means that a guru can be called for the persons who is, uh, for the persons who are expert on a particular subject matters, okay? So, you can find it can be of management, health, fashion, or you can say of any field, you know. So, for example, you can see, Shraddha is a yoga guru. Do you understand? Shraddha is a yoga guru. Next, you can see. So, what is written there? M-A-S-T-E-R-Y. How do you pronounce it? Your Nepali way, how do we Nepali people pronounce? We say that mastery, maybe. Maybe people say that mastery. Do you know it or not? So if you look at the phonemic transcription, how do British people pronounce? You can find it. See, mastery, mastery. OK? So pronounce it once again, please. Mastery. Once again, mastery. All right. You can see again uh, Northern American people, how they, now slightly different, see. It is mastery. British people say mastery, but Northern American people pronounce as mastery, okay? Slightly different one, okay? So mastery, British people, and American people, mastery. So will you practice once? So how do British people pronounce it? Mastery, that's right. How do Northern American people pronounce it? Mastery. Fine, good. So you can tell me again, mastery, it is noun or verb or adjective or adverb, what can it be? Yes, it is again noun. Okay, so you have to understand again and some more information we can get from the dictionary. See, whether mastery is countable or uncountable now. Do you know? What is countable? What is uncountable? So countable means which we can count. We can say one, two, three, four, you know. Uncountable means which we cannot count. Can you count water? No. Can you count people? Yes. So you know. So it is uncountable now and it is singular. If that is uncountable now, then we cannot pluralize it. Okay? We cannot make it plural. So it is singular. Singular means always one. Plural means two or more than two. So of this, uh, you can see, of something great, knowledge about or understanding of a particular thing. All right. So I just like to add some more. So what do you see there? See, command is there. And it is a part of, again, mastery. OK? So there is written, she has mastery of several languages. So another meaning. And it is uncountable of over something, control or power. He struggle for mastery over his emotions. So if you want to control upon something or, some, or on something else, at that time, we can use this term. So it means that another meaning is that control, power. Another meaning we have is that it's a kind of great knowledge, you know. So according to the situation, we have to use this term. We have to use this word, okay? So again, my dear students, I just like to show you another word. See what is written there. Read it, please. Yes, it is thirsty. So how do you pronounce it? Thirsty. OK. So how do we pronounce? We Nepali people may say that thirsty or thirsty. We don't know how. But British people pronounce like this one. See, this is thirsty. So how do they pronounce? Thirsty. Now how do you, have to, uh, how do you pronounce it? Thirsty. Okay. Northern American people say thirsty. See, be careful. British people don't pronounce raw sound there. Raw is silent. Okay. But American people pronounce raw also. For example, F I R S T. How do you pronounce it? You may say that first or you may say that first, you know. So, this is what British people pronounce. Host, they don't pronounce raw sound, and American people pronounce raw sound also. They say first, okay? Likewise, here also you can find British people pronounce thirsty, and American people pronounce it as thirsty. Is it clear? Good. Then, what is its grammatical class? 
Parts of speech? Good. It is adjective. Thirsty is adjective. And you can find another important thing you have to note down. Another important thing you have to remember that we get from the dictionary, you know. So we can find the comparative form and the superlative form of the adjectives. So my dear students, now I just like to ask you a question. For example, let's say, <coughs> let me write down tall. Tall is a positive degree of adjective. So let me clarify you. For example, this is A, this is B, this is C. Can you tell me who is tall? Oh, you are wrong. You said that C is tall. If you said C is tall, then who is taller? Is B taller than C? Or is A taller than C? So what you have to say? Yes, you have to say that A is tall. And if B is taller, then what can be the comparative form of adjective? Yes, that's right. You can add ER. ER or you can add more. If the word is of single syllable or if the, words, uh, if the word has two syllables, then generally we add their ER for making comparison. Okay? So you shouldn't forget. For example, we can add here plus ER, so it becomes taller. So what can you say? You can say that B is taller than A. Understood? That's good. So you can see, among these three, C is the tallest one. So that is what we call superlative. What term do I use here? Tallest. So see, I can write T-A-L-L-E-S-T, tallest. So we have to add their E-S-T. Okay, tall plus E-S-T. So it becomes tallest. Now you can say A is tall, B is taller, and C is the tallest. All right? Now you can find for <coughs> making superlative form, we can add E-S-T, and if the word has three or more than three syllables, at that time we can add their most. For example, if the word is given handsome, you can say that most handsome. Even nowadays we can find that handsome, handsome or handsomest also in modern English, but generally we write most handsome. So next thing that we can find from the dictionary is that we can find comparative form, superlative form of the adjectives. Is it clear, my dear students? Okay, then let me show you one more. <clears throat> Can you see? Good. So what is written there? See, we have more meanings of thirsty. Digging is thirsty. Walk makes you thirsty uh, for something. Having a strong desire for something. Hungry, it means. So he is thirsty for power. Okay. Of plants, fields, dry in need of water. So these are the different meanings of the word thirsty. Now you can find adverb. So what is adverb? Generally, if the word adds something, how the action takes place. That is what we call adverb. For example, if I say, she dances beautifully. So which one is adverb? Beautifully. So I can ask you, how does she dance? You say that she dances beautifully. Okay. So you can find the adverb form of thirsty. So you can find British people pronounce it as thirstily. You know, the raw sound is silent there. And American people pronounce it as thirstily. Raw sound is clearly pronounced there. So you can find it is adverb. So it tells how the action takes place or how that action happens, you know. And another example you can see, Paul drank thirstily. It means that the person, Paul, is very, was very much, you know, thirsty and he wanted to drink water and he drank that one. Okay. So if you know this one, my dear students, then I just like to request you to see the slide. So I just like to give you some information about English consonant sounds and English vowel sounds. <coughs> my dear students, so can you tell me what are vowels in English? Of course, you may say that A, E, I, O, U are the vowels and rest of are the <coughs> consonants. So can you tell me why are these alphabets called vowel sounds and rest of the, uh, the alphabets or letters are called consonant? 
Yes, there is a slightly different. While we are pronouncing the words or sounds, let's say, while we are pronouncing the sounds, if there is a closer or you can say closer contact or there is a, uh, you can say disturbance in pronunciation at that time, we happen to pronounce consonant sounds. For example, if you want to pronounce pa, see, there is uh, the touch, or you can say there the two organs, two lips go closer and they touch each other. And then finally we can pronounce the sound pa. Is it clear? So if we pronounce like that one, those sounds are called consonant sounds. And if there is not any disturbance, we can pronounce that one. If there is not any closeness of the organs, at that time we pronounce as vowel sounds. For example, if you pronounce A, no disturbance. If you want to pronounce uh, A, A, I, O, U. So is it clear between consonant and vowel sounds? Well, my dear students, then I just like to show you some of the sounds that we must know to pronounce the words very correctly. <clears throat> you can see the slide. See, English consonant sounds, okay? See, this is pronounced as pa, as in past. Next one, ba, as in boy. Next one, ta, as in test. Next one, da, as in day. Next one, ka, as in kite. Next one, ga as in go. Next one, uh, cha, as in chest. Next one, ja, as in joke. Next one, fa, as in find. Next one, va, as in visit. Next one, la, as in last. Next one, ra, as in run. Likewise, you can find this sound is called, this sound is tha, as in thick. This sound is da, as in this. This sound is so, as in sad. This sound is jo, as in zoo. This sound is again so, a bit long so, as in su. This sound is jo, as in pleasure. This sound is h, as in, as in heavy. This sound is m, as in many. This sound is n, as in no, no. Sorry, this sound is no, as in no. This sound is mo, you know, nasal sound. As in ring, this sound is yo as in yesterday. This sound is wa, as in wait. All right? Good. My students, then I just like to show you vowel sound. See, you can find English vowel sounds. This is long e, okay? Sip. This is short. Sip. This is u, good. This is long one, suit. This is a, you know, bed. This is a, teacher. This is again a, bird. This is o, like doer. This is a cat. This is a again up. This is again a uh, fa. This is again a on. So you need to have the idea of these consonant and vowel sounds. Is it clear, my students? Well, then let me take you another slide again. So you can turn the page number of page number of your textbook seventy four in my book. So <clears throat> there is an exercise for you enrich your vocabulary. Okay, so what is the first question written there? Can you read out, please? Yes, there is written, uh, find out the Edwards in the dictionary entry above and write their phonemic transcriptions. So my dear students, I have already told you that. I forgot to tell you Edward. So this is a new term for you. So what is Edward? Uh, yeah, of course, Edward means it's a new entry of the word. For example, if you look at here, see, Guru is the Edward. We can find the phonemic transcription of this word. We can find the grammatical class of this word. We can find the meanings of this word, you know. So if we find the new entry or if we source the meanings of the words, that words are called head words, okay? So you have to find out head words. And then you have to write how they pronounce according to the first question. So you know, what is the first word? Uh, sorry, head words you can find? Yes, guru. You can find next one is mastery. Another you can find thirsty, okay, good. And you know phonemic transcriptions because phonemic transcriptions are given there. So you can write the way of pronunciations of these words. Is it clear for question number one? Good. Now question number two, there is written, let's see, find out the synonyms for the following words from the entry. About what can be the similar word for command? See? You can find here command. What can be the similar meaning of the word command? You can find command is here. See, 
you can write, for example, control or power. Simply you can write command, C-O-M-M-A-N-D. And you can write control, C-O-N-T-R-O-L. From here itself. So there can be another word, guru. What can be the similar word for guru? What can be the, sorry, my students, it should be D. So what can be the, let's say, similar uh, meaning of the word guru? So you can find here, see, teacher or leader, okay? You can write down teacher, here no problem. So next one we have hungry, H-U-N-G-R-Y. So what can it be? C. Having a strong desire for something also. So you can write thirsty also, okay? So T-H-I-R-S-T-Y, thirsty. Is it clear? Now you can look at question number C. Where does the stress fall in the words thirsty, guru, and mastery? So my dear students, maybe it can be the new term for you, stress. So have you ever heard this word? Have you ever heard this term? See, stress means generally in English language, we give extra focus on pronunciation. That is what you can understand as stress. And generally we use this type of sign, okay? This type of sign. So this is what we call stress. British people use this one. For example, there is, a, there is uh, the question for you, where does stress fall in the words thirsty, guru, and mastery? For example, you can see thirsty is here. Now can you tell me where you have to put this sign here as the stress? You are right. You have to write, give stress here, thirsty. So we have to pronounce a bit louder there, and then rest of the part will be, you can say, lower, thirsty. Okay. Next word we have is that guru. You have to use here before go. Guru. All right. Now we have mastery. You can find, again, it's here. Mastery. Understood? So if you can practice it better. So I suggest you to practice this sort of things in your daily communications. So another question, you have my dear students, question number D. There is former sentence is using the words thirsty, guru, and mastery. So your job, this is your class assignment, my students. You have to make the sentences of your one using the words thirsty, guru, and mastery. For example, I can say that there is a thirsty crow. See, simple sentence I can make to help you. There is a thirsty crow. So for rest of the words, guru and mastery, you have to do yourselves, okay? Well, then let me take you another exercise, see, of your textbook. Read the entry again and tick the correct answer there. So what is the first question, my dear students there? Please read. So what's the first question? Read a bit loudly, please. Yes. Which word class does the word thirsty fall in? Now you have to tell me that is thirsty noun or verb or adjective or adverb. Which one? Or is that noun? Is thirsty noun? Is thirsty verb? Is thirsty adverb? Is thirsty ad adjective? If you have any confusion, you can take help of the dictionary here. See, thirsty. So w w what is its grammatical class? Which word class does it fall? Yes, you are right. It is adjective. Now you can tick adjective. You have to copy these questions in your notebook and you have to tick there. Okay. So question number two, you can see which of the following is an adverb. Now you can tell me which, which tells something about adverb in the uh, list of the words. There is thirstily, there is guru, there is thirsty, there is mastery. So which one? Of course, again you can see here, see, thirstily, it is adverb. You can tick there. Good. Next question you can see, what does the word guru mean in the sentence? Most management gurus base their appeal on one big theme. So which can be the correct uh, answer here? A Hindu religious teacher, does it mean? Or an expert on a particular subject? Or you can say a Christian religious teacher? Or you can say a Buddhist religious teacher? Which can be the correct answer here? Yes, you are definitely right. The correct answer for this question is an expert on a particular subject. You are good. Again, I just like to ask you question number four. So what's written there? Please read out. 
So question is, which of the following is the superlative form of the word thirsty? See, I have given you the example. I have shown you the example of tall, taller, the tallest. All right. Now, can you tell me which is the superlative form of the word thirsty? You can find thirsty, thirstier, thirstiest, most thirsty. Which one? Yes, you are 100% right. It is thirstiest. Okay. Now, question number five. Which of the following is true in dictionary entry? See, I have uh, shown you already example alphabetical order. Choose comes first or choice comes first. Do you know it or not? Apple comes first or N comes uh, first in the dictionary. So you can find. The word mastery comes before the word thirsty. Or the word guru comes after the word thirsty. Or the word thirsty comes before the word mastery. Or the word thirsty comes before the word guru. Please tell me. Our right answer is that mastery comes before thirsty because here is M, here is T, and definitely M comes before the alphabet T. Is it clear? Well, my students, now <clears throat> you can find again, I just like to give you the hints of these questions, and you have to do it as your home assignment at your home, okay? So the question, what do NAME and BRE stand for? Can you guess? I have already told you that. See. BRE stands for British English and NAME -A -A stands for Northern American English. All right, you have to write it down in your notebook in your, uh, at your uh, home. Question number two, how many meanings does the word guru have? You can, can, you can count here and please write it down. Number C, write down any two meanings of the word thirsty. You can find the meanings of the words thirsty here in the list. So you can again write down in your notebook at your home. Okay. The last question we have, what do SB and STS stand for? You can find this type of abbreviations in the dictionary, short forms, you know. So SB stands for somebody and STS stands for something. Is it clear, my students? Now the last thing that I have to tell you is that put it into practice. Now this is your project work, okay? You have to do at your home. So what you have to do, see. Copy any 10 words from any English newspaper. You can find many English newspapers in the market. You can buy one and from that newspaper, uh, look at them, uh, you have to copy 10 English words which you feel difficult, okay? And you have to look at them in an Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary or if you have Cambridge Dictionary also no problem, okay? And you have to find out the meanings of those 10 words and you have to write those meanings in your notebook. Is it all right? If so, this much for today, my dear students. See you. Bye-bye.